Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast Midweek Supplemental. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco, and today we're talking about my top 10 gift knives uh, from close family and friends. Uh, coming up next week, we'll have top 10 gift knives from friends of the show and uh, friends I've met uh, through the Knife Junkie podcast. Um, just keep digging deeper and deeper into those sub collections. Uh, state of the collection, I have a new knife. No one guessed what it is. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll redo a t-shirt contest and make it easier. So, so I'm not just saying, uh, read my mind. Uh, and then uh, Life Knife News, uh, another Quaken from Boker. Yep. <clears throat> Another Quaken Boker coming up. But um, first, as always, we're going to get into uh, what's in my pocket. Uh, this is my pocket check. I want to tell you. So I've actually had real need and use in the past 24 hours. It will be 48 when the weekend's over. Doing a lot of painting around the house. Actually, not around the house, just in one daughter's room. But it's, you know, I don't want to say it's complicated, but uh, it's more complicated than not painting the room. And uh, so I've been using uh, a couple of knives that I always bring out when I, well, one knife that I always bring out when I paint, uh, but I'll get to that in a second. My pocket check, just in case, um, just in case I get in a knife fight, you know, in the hallway uh, of my house is the uh, Emerson designed zero tolerance, zero six thirty. This is zero tolerances version of the, um, CQC eight, the, uh, upswept clip point, sometimes called banana blade style, uh, knife with a nice big, um, wave on it. And, uh, my, uh, I've got some aftermarket, uh, green linen, my car to handle scales for this knife. It comes with a really boring, um, uh, black G10. And uh, I put a, an Emerson clip on there from from a different uh, Emerson, so it doesn't say ZT on a big shiny clip. This is a great knife, and it's exciting. <laughs> I, I should say I've used this one hard before, uh, cutting a whole bunch of carpet when we were redoing uh, my wife's office in the basement here. And to see how this S35VN uh, zipped through that carpet and stayed I mean, I ended up, uh, you know, re honing it, but not resharpening it. It stayed sharp the whole time. And uh, this is a sturdy, sturdy knife. And you know how I feel about Emerson Designs. So I have this in the pocket in case actual hard use uh, needs come up today while finishing my daughter's room. And then I also have uh, this, uh, the Cold Steel Kiridashi, uh, a recent favorite. I got it in 2020. It's this little... Uh, you know, inexpensive. It's got that German steel. What is it? 4116 or uh, 4034 stainless steel. I think it's German. I think it's from Krupp. Uh, and it's got this nylon handle, grivery handle, and a triad lock, and just a great little utility blade. That straight edge, that pointy, sort of worn, cliffy, kiridashi shape is excellent for uh, what I'm using this for. is you know, when you when you tape up an electrical outlet or you tape up, uh, uh, some, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, you know, the stuff around the well. <laughs> you can tell I do a lot of painting and carpentry. Um, but uh, when you're when you're when you're just kind of uh, laying out tape so that you can get a nice clean edge, and you have to go around things, and you want to be precise, this is great for it. I use this for going around the. Uh, um, <clears throat> the outlets, geez, man. Okay. So there's those two, but also I just wanted to show you, and, uh, this is my always carry it when I'm painting knife. Uh, I think it's got some paint. Yeah. It's got some paint still on the clip from last time. Uh, for some reason I started carrying the Endura every time I paint and I, I love it. So, uh, this used to be my, uh, edging tape knife. And I think maybe I subconsciously, chose it because the color of the handle is the same as that color of the of the blue edging tape though i've moved on to frog tape i like their green and yellow tape you don't get any of the paint leaking under 
Uh, but anyway, I think that's why I, I chose that blue Endura. And then yesterday, just by chance, I had this in my pocket and my daughter really gravitated towards it. She used it for, she was doing some, uh, laying some tape down too around the baseboards and stuff. And this is what she was using to uh, make a little 45 degree angle and, and, and cut her tape. And she really liked it. I told her, you know, hold it with two hands. And she did boom. And she used it. And then when she closed it, she said, daddy, I really like this knife. And I, you know, I love hearing that. I'm like, all right, baby, it's going in your will. You know, as soon as I kick the bucket, that knife is yours. She's like, okay. All right. Okay. Easy does it with the talk, but I really like this knife. And uh, I was very excited about that. So basically that's my, uh, that's my pocket carry today. ZT, a Kiridashi, a Spyderco, and a Protec. The Spyderco and the Protec will be floating around the room that we were, we are painting. The other two will be nestled snugly in my pocket. So uh, Thursday Night Knives this past week, we did our Patreon Gentleman Junkie giveaway and our good friend, Mr. Faledo, who's been a Gentleman Junkie for a few months. Let me just tell you, Gentleman Junkie, you can be a lady and be a Gentleman Junkie. It's just a level of support. Uh, and gentleman referring to the gentleman knife. Uh, so $10 is a gentleman junkie. $5 is a tactical junkie. And uh, and then you have $5, that's a traditional junkie. Um, and or $3, sorry. But at the $10 level every month, you get entered into this knife giveaway. We did a wee banter this month. I, uh, I really like Ben Peterson from uh, formerly of Blade HQ and their whole media department. Great guy, reviewed so many knives. So many knives came through his, uh, you know, through his hands across his desk. And uh, culminating sort of his knife media career, he made a knife with Wee Knives, uh, one of his favorite makers, as you know, if you ever watched any of his videos. And he had it made in Ben Blue, at least that's the original. Now it's out in gray and black and such, but uh, Ben Blue, that, that Blade HQ blue color, and a three inch, beautiful three inch uh, symmetrical drop point blade. Um, just uh, saw that they re-dropped it in blue, which is how I think that knife should be had because that that's his, uh, that's his color. And uh, so gave that away to lucky Mr. Faledo. Uh, that is on the way to you, sir. Maybe by the time you're hearing this, you're actually holding it in your hand. Uh, great knife. Uh, also wanted to mention that we have a new patron, a new gentleman junkie, uh, Benjamin Belkin. He's Benny B three, five, seven on Instagram. Now, Benny, uh, has been, uh, or I, sh I should call him Benjamin has been watching, uh, Thursday night knives for a short period of time. He got interested and involved, uh, when I was going through my recent, uh, slip joint and traditional phase and Benjamin collects super high-end, beautiful custom slip joints. And he came on Thursday Night Knives this past week and showed a number of them off. Uh, so thank you so much, Benjamin. It was a pleasure meeting you. And thank you so much for your support as a patron. That means next month you will be on the wheel of destiny that spins round and round until it stops randomly, internet randomly on one of your names. And uh, that's how Mr. Faleto won this week. Uh, perhaps Benny B357 will win next time. Uh, so yeah, uh, Patreon, uh, if you, if you like knives and if you like this show, check out what you can get on Patreon. So there are three levels of support. You get knife junkie stickers, a mention on the podcast as, as you just heard early access to the Sunday interview and midweek supplemental podcasts with no ads during the show. And at the top tier of support, as I just mentioned, you get entered into this uh, knife giveaway. So you have a, a chance to win it. It's always a cool knife. Trust me. It's always nice. And uh, sometimes a little quirky, which is, which is good. It's good to get knives as gifts. You'll see later that you wouldn't pick up for yourself. Anyway, your support helps fund the infrastructure needs of the show, hosting servers, apps, and equipment, as well as knives for review, donation, and giveaway. So check us out on Patreon and see what helping us gets you. The quickest way to get there is by going to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So 
I have a love-hate relationship. As you know, I like to quetch about quetch about things uh, from time to time, and I might I might latch onto something and just kind of go on and on about it. And it seems like the last couple of weeks, I've been talking a lot about the uh, Burnley, the Lucas Burnley designed Boker Quaken, a knife that's been around for at least a decade and just has so many iterations. And the reason I feel like it's been in the news a lot lately is because they just keep coming out. Okay, so uh, recently I talked about the out the front. Um, and then, you know, uh, just as a recap, they have the regular one, they have the one with the uh, with the flipper tab, they have the short one, they have the, uh, the one that's a fixed blade, they have a kitchen version, they have a out the side automatic, uh, they have, now they have an out the front automatic, and now, they have a lightweight version. It's only three ounces. It's got a G10 handle. It's got G10 handle scales. Uh, same liner lock construction you've come to love in every other Quaken. Uh, yeah. uh, actually, that's not the. That's not the. We'll be getting to the Quaken in a second. Actually, Jim, go to the other link I sent. Actually, um, there's a uh, a link right to the Boker website, and I gotta say, I mean. I do love the design. I mean, what's not to love? That beautiful, graceful, upswept blade, that super neutral handle. I love the way it terminates in that little angle for your thumb if you have to carry it in reverse grip. Love the knife. It just, man, they get so much mileage out of it. Legs, I think they call it. Legs. That design has legs. So yeah, thanks, Jim. Here it is right here with, uh, with your VG10, you know, your traditional VG10 blade steel, that beautiful handle shape. Uh, you know, this knife is, is fetching. Don't get me wrong. But here it's got G10. Yep, G10. Has a G10. So now it's lighter. It's three ounces. I, I got to get it. I think this is the universe telling me, Bob, get yourself a Burnley Quaken. You've been, been admiring it for 100 years. And you've admired every single version of it that's come out. Like the ones you were just showing that there was like a tan. Looks nice. I just need to get one of these and have it in my collection. Maybe they'll stop making and reiterating it. Listen to me. I don't, I don't mean to sound like, like an old man. When are they going to put this thing? Why do they think? Okay. Maybe I sound like an old man. Uh, but there you go. It's another it's another Boker uh, Quaken. So let's see. Maybe next week we'll have another one to mention. An XL. I, I think they need to do an XL. I mean, geez, they've done everything else. And that knife, if any, deserves the XL treatment. Okay, next, Tash, uh, Tashi Barucha, one of my absolute favorite knife designers and makers. And I say designers first because I've only ever gazed at his beautiful knives. I've never owned or held one. So, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he's an awesome knife maker as well as designer. In any case, uh, he does all of these. Uh, he was actually on episode. 104. Great interview. I want to have him back on now that we're visual. Uh, what a what a great guy and just an artist, uh, for sure, an artist. Uh, but uh, he does a lot of different uh, series uh, for himself. You know, he sets up little challenges for himself or just has themes. Uh, you may remember at one point, um, you know, besides many, many beautiful and functional and artistic looking folders that he's uh, had made by different makers and collaborated with and made himself and, and had in production. He also did a couple of years back, uh, a few Wolverine claws where he ground out these beautiful uh, blades, uh, you know, a whole bunch of them, maybe 12. I think he made a, a, a two, two pairs or maybe, I don't know, maybe he did 24, but, uh, but they were, uh, you grip them in your hands and, and the blades kind of protrude from your hands, like your Wolverine, the superhero. He does a lot of very interesting projects. So now he has, uh, a, a back on the folder, uh, now talking about Tashi, the folder maker, which is what he is primarily, he's got this new collection coming out called the Legacy Collection. And each knife, I think he's only making nine of them. And this is the first one in that series. And it's the Ken Onion uh, uh, Legacy Knife. So it's his ode to Ken Onion. And look at that. I mean, uh, it's all Tashi in the handle, but look at that beautiful uh, blade. That is... Uh, 
it's got that top arch curve that you've seen uh, in, in a bunch of uh, Ken Onion designs. And then look at that sort of recurving, I don't know, hawk, almost, I don't know how to describe this thing. It is beautiful and it looks like a Ken Onion. It's got the, it's got the organic nature of a Ken Onion blade, but the I don't know, the absolute signature of Tashi in the handle. And um, man, wouldn't it be great to be one of the nine lucky folks to own that knife? Uh, it looks like the next one he's going to do is a Bob Loveless uh, tribute. And Bob Loveless, uh, um, you know, he made the shoot knife. He's, he's the designer of many knives that are now common patterns, just like there are a lot of cotton, uh, common patterns in slip joints. There are a lot of knives now that uh, fixed blade knives that are now common patterns because he designed them and made them amazing. Like the, uh, the sub hilt uh, fighter, the shoot knife, uh, there's a hunter style and uh, you know, several others. And I cannot wait to see what he does with Bob Loveless. I'm sure it'll be amazing. So uh, looking here on his Instagram, he did this whole thing recently where he was going through different knives, collaboration knives with him and others, and then just his own knives. Look, look at that blue handle one. That's uh, that's one of the onion knives. Anyway, he was doing sort of battles between his different knife designs and people were voting. Very interesting guy. I believe he's a marketing executive. I mean, he's a very successful man outside of knives, but he's got this tremendous sense of style and, uh, you know, really <laughs> knows his way around knife design and building knives and uh, just an interesting guy. So, check out uh, the legacy collection also check out episode 104 and then hopefully we'll have tashi back on here uh soon so uh coming up let's uh let's take a look at some of the new things in my collection let's talk about my stuff for a minute and now that we're caught up with knife life news let's hear more of the knife junkie podcast Okay, going under the knife cam is a knife that, as you can see, just puts a smile on my face. And this was the knife that I, uh, last episode, I said, uh, if you can guess what is coming, I'll send you a free t-shirt. That was kind of unfair. Uh, but I thought my hint was a, was a dead giveaway. Uh, but it's this. This is a Randall made knife. This is my Randall made number 16 special fighter. And um, I've wanted a Randall knife for um, mm, at least 20 years. And uh, I remember seeing them at the custom knife show in New York in the late 90s. And I remember seeing $400. What? You know, uh, it was that kind of thing. But man, oh, I really want one. And I, I remember uh, a very nice guy letting me paw through a whole bunch of them and just, just knowing that I wasn't. You know, I was a, like a street urchin off the street. But uh, anyway, finally got myself a uh, Randall made knife. No, I did not order this five years ago and wait for it to be delivered. They do leak out a small amount of knives to purveyors so that purveyors can have them on hand and sell them. Uh, but they're always in very limited quantities and it's catch as catch can. And Knife Center is one of those purveyors. And uh, they they will frequently have uh, a, a, a small shipment of Randall made knives come in. Recently, that a Smithsonian, Smithsonian Bowie there. That's this giant, giant uh, twelve inch bladed Bowie. It's just so gorgeous. And then uh, this, uh, this and others. Anyway, let me talk about this one. So this uh, is the number sixteen, and and you can tell by the handle, it's a dive knife. And uh, it looks a bit like the fort number 14 attack handle with the four grooves, but I believe the attack handle is a little bit shorter here in the pommel area. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. This is full tang. So the, uh, the blade comes all the way to the, uh, all the way to the end, the tang, and it's slotted on there. You don't see it on this side. And then the mechanical connection is this tube, and then it's epoxied the hell on there. So uh, this is a beautiful leather sheath. Also, I love that it it has the size on the back. Randall made knives, Orlando, Florida, seven. So this is a number 16 special fighter, but it has a number one blade. Now the number one 
style Randall knife is the famous one made famous by uh, American GIs during World War II. This was a uh, very well carried representative, represented and used knife uh, by GIs in World War II. Uh, apparently, as the story goes, well, Bo Randall started making knives in 1937 and selling them at a table in, I think, his uncle's hardware shop, something like that. And uh, I think he gave one to an army buddy, uh, word got round, and then he would receive letters uh, from GIs in the field saying, uh, like, Knife Man, Orlando, Florida. And you open it up and it's like, please make me a knife. I'm over here fighting war. And so that's how this knife got famous. But they are, they're all handmade. And like I said, if you order one from Randall, it's going to take five years, literally. That's just the thing. That's the journey. Uh, I don't like journeys. So uh, <laughs> I went to Knife Center. I was just lurking on Knife Center and, uh, you know, and there it was. But uh, it has uh, caused the sale of a couple of other knives. But I have to say, this thing has got me very, very, very excited. Uh, the four grooves, very deep and committed grooves in the handle I was concerned about initially, but they fit wonderfully in, in sort of this saber grip, in a hammer grip. This knife is great in this reverse grip. It gives you this perfect place to put your thumb, you know, if you needed to, you know, uh, I don't know, see if a 55 gallon oil drum actually contained illegal weapons or something. You needed to punch through it with this. You got your thumb right there. All right. So this is, I believe, 440B stainless steel. You can see that it's stainless from the S next to the maker's mark, Randall made Orlando, Florida. Uh, I think it is B. I don't think it is C or A. <laughs> so there you go. I, I I am not sure uh, what the qualities of 440B are. Um, no doubt they're more uh, robust than what it was during World War II. And uh, it did just fine in World War II. So I have no doubt that whatever this 440 uh, steel is, it will do uh, fine for my purposes, uh, which is mostly just gawking. Uh, the beautiful thing about Almost every single Randall knife is that the top swedge is sharp. I love that. I love that. Now, on some of their uh, more kind of practical and hunting models, they still have that, which I could see people taking issue with. If they're actually uh, buying the knife maybe to skin an animal, they might not want, uh, you know, they might want so uh, that not to be sharp. So I, I'm pretty sure there are some models that don't sharpen them, uh, that swedge, but pretty much a, a many, 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 uh, a majority of them, let me say that, sorry, a majority of them have that sharpened back swedge. And that gets me very excited, as you can tell, because I've lost all facility with my words. So I'm so thrilled to have this in my collection. Um, <laughs> every handmade knife I get uh, gets me more and more excited about having handmade knives. Um, this, of course, is in a small uh, factory setting. These are made, but but they're all handmade, and <laughs> I just I just love the classic design. So I'm so excited to have this knife, and uh, I know that there will be more Randalls in my future. I I before I got into folders, I was always into fixed blade knives, and this is like a this is a dream a dream knife here. So. Very, very happy to have it. Or a grail, as one might say. Next, uh, I'm going to take a little sip of water. Next, I've always had butterfly knives since high school, you know. and um, But they've always been kind of uh, uh, cheap uh, martial arts store butterfly knives. And I finally got a nice high quality one. And it's this Kershaw Lucha. Now, if there are any Bally boys out there who are rolling their eyes, that's not a nice one. You need this is an awesome knife, and for my purposes, which are 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 not much, it is really great. Now, I I have three or four ways I can open this uh, quickly and adeptly, 
and um, you know, I've been doing it those four ways for years and years and years. But I, I, I have to say, I have very little interest, very little to no interest, in figuring out um, uh, the the flipping and the the aerobatics, the amazing things you see some people do uh, with with uh, butterfly knives or bally songs that require them to be built with premium materials, premium construction. Uh, to me, this is premium enough. I mean, uh, you have you have access to the the pivots there i think yeah yeah you can you can uh, take it apart i believe it's got uh uh washers in there it moves so nicely and all my other uh sort of even my baron sons then that's the that's the best i've had so far uh they just kind of have a lot of play back and forth this way there's no play side to side here there's no play in this at all and it makes the action beautiful here, maybe right there. Uh, and it's got the traditional four and a half inch blade, the big handle. Um, I love this thing. And then it's got a uh, it's got a sort of futuristic look to me that that just kind of looks cool. It, it's like futuristic gambler, you know, with those diamonds. And uh, can't really do it too too well left handed. And that clip point blade with that very unique twenty twenty swedge. Uh, a lot of Kershaw knives had that kind of swedge on them uh, in the twenty twenty model year. So yeah, Kershaw Lucha, fourteen C twenty eight and very sharp, very capable knife, um, but also flips great as far as I know, and uh, um, is very nice and light. Now I keep it in my pocket. I've been carrying it around. It's pretty unobtrusive. I keep it in this uh, knife slip that I made for um, for my Buck 110. And it just stays oriented north to south like this in my pocket. It's thin and light. Very cool knife. Very, I mean, you could make it practical if if you find no problem uh, flipping a bally song in public. You could make that thing pretty practical. So last in state of the collection is not, uh, this is not my knife, but I just wanted to show it off real quick. Uh, this is a, a loaner from Jock. Uh, you know him as Jock's Knife on Instagram. And uh, he's got a varied and wonderful collection. And he also has uh, two really cool looking huskies. Uh, but this is his mini sax from Emerson. And I just wanted to compare and contrast with the standard sax. Here they are next to each other. Standard sax has a nearly th four inch blade. What is that? Three and three point seven five inch blade or so. The um, the mini has a three and a quarter or so inch blade, and uh, you can just see how it 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 is a perfectly shrunk down version. Sometimes with knives, you'll see that things get rearranged when when designs are shrunk down um and by things i mean the ergonomics the grooves the the uh the shapes of the handles and such uh this is exactly the same just shrunk down and uh to be 100 percent honest with you <laughs> for my hands my medium-sized hands the mini version is more comfortable this double swale here, where, where you put two fingers in one swale and two fingers in another, to me is more comfortable on the mini. Now, it might be even more comfortable if you took the, uh, the wave off and you'd have a perfect place for your thumb. But I've always thought that though this is just about my favorite Emerson, um, or definitely in, in, in competition for my favorite Emerson, I always kind of thought the double swale thing was a miss hit on this. I always felt this deserved a single finger groove and one long swale for the rest of your fingers. Though I have, uh, <laughs> I've grown to live with it and it, I now find it very comfortable when I pick it up and use it. But as soon as I got this mini sax in hand, I was like, ooh, this is nice. I really like all of the mini Emersons I've handled. And that's only been three, but, um, <clears throat> I think they're really, really well done. And the fact that it is the same width, look at the, look at the width of these two. It is the exact same width as the standard version. It actually makes this knife, you would think at first like, oh, they should have made it thinner. That was kind of 
lazy to just kind of take all the same materials and but actually uh for the th for the size of it you want that full thickness because you can really hold on to this knife like this in a hammer grip or like that or like this uh if it were thinner uh, there'd be a lot of kind of uh, it would feel like it was going to slip around maybe slip out of your hand so uh the mini emersons they are great knives uh i i gave my mini uh seven and i had a cqc7 mini uh with a chisel ground blade awesome i gave it to uh jimmy slash to thank him for giving me a a lightweight uh four max love that knife but uh, this mini sax is it's going to be just yet another knife that's difficult to box back up and send to its owner. But, you know, you know, that's what we do here. We send everything back. Just ask Alex. I gave him his arch nemesis back. What a cool knife. Anyway, so that does it for the state of the collection here. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I'm done showing you knives uh, because I have 10 knives here that are uh well they're gift knives from my very close friends and family and i i wanted to do a gift knife uh gift knife show after jim mentioned it he'd be like that that'd be a cool thing to find out you're always talking about gift knives and you're always talking about how you won't sell a knife that's been given to you um you should do a thing on that i said that's great i started looking at them and i decided i had to break it down because I've gotten a lot of uh, knives over the years from close friends and family that are very important to me or that I use a lot or whatever that I definitely want to show. And then also, uh, having uh, after starting this show, I've met other reviewers, other knife collectors who have sent me things. Hey, check this out. So I want to I want to show both. So today it's close friends and family. And I'm including in that designers that I've had on the show or makers that I've had on the show that have directly sent me their knives. Now, to me, that's different from um, reviewers and, and other knife friends that I've made, other YouTubers who sent me things. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting in the weeds. Let's get into this top 10 gift knives from close friends and family. All right, uh, close friends, family, and that also means designers. And uh, it, I'm going to start with number 10. This was one of my favorite uh, lightweight pants or sweatpants quarantine knives. This is the um, this is the niche designs um, ingress. It comes up a lot. I, I just love this knife. Uh, my wife says it looks like a Klingon knife. I, I cannot disagree with her, uh, but neither of us think that that's a bad thing. My wife is a bit of a nerd. Uh, <laughs> gorgeous nerd. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so this niche means a lot to me because this is uh, one of, let's see, he's got, he had three prototypes for this design. And um, this was the second in those three prototypes. And he gave me one of them. I know they were very limited, made by We Knife, uh, We Knife Company, and just beautifully, beautifully executed and designed. By the way, I love that clip. I love that sort of spring, double stage spring clip, titanium backspacer, titanium, beautiful milling. This uh, this cross hatching feels great in the hand, really adds purchase. Uh, you've got this nice, on this version, you have this nice uh, protrusion here to guard your hand from sliding up on that really thin and slicey, beautifully thinly designed and, uh, Executed blade. Now, I don't remember what this is. What is this? 20. Oh, this is number three of four. I never noticed that. See, it makes it even more of an honor to have number three of four. Probably hard to see. It's right there on the tang. There we go. Three of four. How cool. I didn't know that. Thanks again, Nick. And then right here, the steel. What is this? 20 CV. Oh my gosh. My eyes. My eyes. All right, so uh, Nick Rogers designed Niche Designs Ingress. Love that knife. Another one, a gift directly from uh, someone that I interviewed. Uh, that was Kerry Orifice of Off Grid Knives. He sent me this knife, and it is so sweet. And this is this is one of those knives. Many of these gift knives are like this, in that it's not a knife I would have gotten myself because... When this came out, I was in my mind over uh, frame lock, titanium frame lock flippers. 
after we uh, talked on the show, he sent me this. Uh, check it out. I hope you like it. And oh my gosh, I love it. I've carried this knife a lot this year. Uh, this is the Off Grid Knives Scorpion, and it is also created by Wee Knives, uh, designed in California by uh, Carrie at Off Grid Knives, but uh, built by Wee, Kni Wee Knives, <laughs> Wee Knife Company. Just a beautiful titanium knife with this uh, carbon fiber inlays. I'm a sucker for inlays, and uh, I think this carbon fiber looks great, especially against the backdrop of this jimping, which is very useful and grippy. You've got the uh, sunken handle, deep carry pocket clip. This thing is awesome. The blade also very sharp. I love this. The this portion of the blade, the very front part, reminds me a little bit of the uh, old LCC uh, from Microtech, designed by Lightfoot. It's like early 2000s. And then up here, this reminds me of the Microtech SOCOM um, in the way the thumb is there, and then the way there's a little bit of a slope here that your thumb can grip onto. Something about this knife has that vibe. Maybe it's the angular handle. Uh, when you put them next to each other, they don't look anything alike. But to me, this has a, uh, uh, a Microtech vibe. I love this knife. All right. Thank you, Carrie. Put that right next to the ingress. Okay. Now, oh, this is uh, from uh, from American Blade Designs. I'm sorry. American Blade Works. This is the Model 1 version 5, gifted to me by uh, Michael Martin, the proprietor and sole maker of these knives. Now, these knives he makes in his house with his CNC machinery and his tools. And one of the amazing things about him as a knife maker, knife company, is how responsive he is. This knife, as I mentioned, is version 5 of this design. And it's the culmination of feedback from many different reviewers and different uh, knife lovers, connoisseurs, and such that he's reached out to for uh, um, advice, suggestions, uh, check out my knife, tell me what you like, what you don't like. And he has really responded. Now, if you look at this, look at this. Okay. it's First of all, it's beautifully contoured on the outside, G10 handle, very comfortable. Inset liner lock, titanium. Actually, I'm not sure if that uh, if this liner is titanium, um, but uh, titanium backspacer, uh, sculpted titanium clip with hidden hardware, beautiful action on bearings. This one has a blasted blade, and uh, I feel with every use, I feel it getting smoother and smoother because that blasting creates uh, a bit of a an abrasive surface. It takes a minute for the ball bearings to create their own sort of race in, in that, uh, in that texture. And I, I feel it getting smoother and smoother all the time. I love this knife. Now this is not a, uh, this is also a, a short knife, kind of like the, uh, the ingress over here and not in my general wheelhouse, but I love it. This is, this is the, the perfect thing because I would be missing out on this knife if it hadn't been gifted to me. And what a great knife it is. I would I would have gotten a seven inch uh, folder from Cold Steel instead of this, you know? And it would have sat next to my other seven inch Cold Steel folders and gotten no use. Instead, I have this as a gift and it is so useful and it was handmade in, 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 in one man's house. <laughs> and what a spectacular thing. I'm growing more and more appreciative of that part of, of the whole thing. Okay, next, from Doug Ritter, this is uh, the Mini RSK-1, and what a gorgeous knife this is. I've shown this off a lot recently. You've got a thin blade here, and you've got a very nice high flat grind, and uh, you've got all of the uh, 20 CV sharp goodness you'd expect from the Hogue 
the Ritter design and uh, and such. But what I love, first of all, this was a gift from Doug Ritter, and that means a lot to me. But also, look at this beautifully contoured and milled g mascus handle g mascus being different layers of i mean that's what they call it it's just layer g10 but the way they milled it it looks kind of damascusoid and uh yeah love this love this little knife it's a great great user and uh a very very nice and welcome gift from a great guy who's fighting for our knife rights next and last on the designer slash maker kick is the ex01 what is it ext01 it's a tomahawk as you can see uh designed by alan alishowitz and made by hogue and uh this was a gift after uh, alan came on the show he asked if i was interested in tomahawks and i said why yes and he was gracious and kind enough to send this to me and i know that uh you know, that's not free. And so I, I not only do I uh, appreciate that in the gesture, but uh, it's an honor to have a, a, an Alishowitz design and one that's not, uh, this isn't so easy to get. It was not inexpensive and they didn't make a ton of them. And uh, it's just a great little battle ax. Uh, my my uh, brother-in-law said it would have come handy for him, come in handy for him, uh, in wartime and i bet a lot of people feel that way you know just breaking down doors or popping open crates or whatever you're, you're doing uh so yeah that's the uh alishowitz designed hogue ext01 next from my good friend kurt this knife has gone a lot of miles this is the condor knives hudson bay knife and now this is based on a trapper design from canada uh, during the fur trade days um you're like yeah when's that bob i, I guess it's, it's in the 1700s <laughs> and 1800s uh but these are general use camp and trapping knives uh so this is used for uh skinning game for uh, building your camp for butchering food for uh, fending off man and wolf, tooth and claw, it's an it's a do everything knife. And uh, Condor, I, I like Condor knives out of out of uh, El Salvador. I have three. I think I have a Bush Lore. I have their Parang, and I have this. And this one gets a lot of use. It is it has a nice uh, thin. I think it's three sixteenths of an inch, relatively thin, uh, but. Uh, blade stock but it's got this really nice sort of convex ground i've had to re-edge this uh put a new edge on this a number of times because i use this a lot for chopping and swinging and oftentimes we'll hit stones or there's a fence around here that i'm always hitting and uh, we'll take little chinks out but it comes back very easily it's 1095 steel i like the rough sort of texture they they i don't think they leave it i think they actually put that on there uh, but I really like the way it looks as well as how how just basic and general use it is. So, uh, and just from a, a very dear friend. So it's great when you can really, really use something. From my brother-in-law, this is the bayonet he carried in Iraq. And uh, so this, this, this traveled from Iraq up, to or from Kuwait up to into Iraq during the initial invasion. Oh, well, actually, he was there in 2004 through six, I believe. So, uh, in any case, uh, this was with him a lot. The one time it wasn't was the only time he was he was asked or told to fix bayonets. Uh, he said uh, generally it was kind of a pain in the butt to have on his belt, especially coming in and out of Humvees as much as he was doing. And uh, one day he just decided not to bring it. <clears throat> and he was in the uh, uh, civil affairs group and uh, there was a group of angry people in front of him and they were told, okay, fix bayonets. Let's kind of like keep a standoff range. And he was, he was left high and dry. <laughs> His sense of convenience stung him on that day. So there's a, a good story behind this thing. And, uh, oh, I'm just 
I'm just uh, honored to have the knife that he used and the, the knife and the sheath he used while he served. Thank you for your service, brother. Speaking of brother, from my brother, Victor, the K-Bar knife. Now, I got to talk about Vic for a second. He um, has given me so many amazing gifts. Uh, two of them are on the wall behind me. There are just a lot of knives, a lot of great knives he's gotten me. Things like uh, like this Leatherman that when I got it, I was like, uh, a Leatherman. This is, I don't know, 20 years ago or so. I use it all the time. Like I said, I'm painting. This is in my back pocket. Other gifts like swords, other gifts like uh, antique bowies and stuff. I mean, he's gotten me so much. So to li limit it is is difficult. But I'm going to, since I'm on a combat knife kick these days, I'll talk about this. This is the uh, USMC K-Bar in the original design that he got me in the early 90s. I think he got this for me when I graduated college. Um, great knife, been with me uh, all, ever since, and uh, has always been close by, but only in recent years had I figured how to put an edge on this. The swedge, interestingly enough, was always quite sharp, but the main edge was eh, from the factory. I mean, you can see, look at that grind line. There was a sneeze that happened right about there. but. It also has a very, and you can see how uneven it is when you compare it to the fuller, but it has such a great uh, handmade look to it and just authenticity to it. Uh, I love this thing. Yeah, I wish they would uh, sharpen the swedges on the new K-Bar, but, uh, you know, first world problems. I'm going to put this down here, kind of crossways. We only have a couple of knives left, uh, but... Uh, actually, this might end up going top 11. I kind of forgot to, to mention one to Jim, so <laughs> we shall see. All right, so from my wife, again, she has gotten me a number of really great knives. Uh, but since I'm on the combat knife kick, I'm going to go with the Topps Wild Pig Hunter. What a great knife this is. So you have, uh, this is actually based on a Russian special forces knife. Uh, and I can't remember what that knife is called. I wish I did the research beforehand. I apologize. But I have seen this very uh, blade design and handle on Russian special forces knife. Uh, I'm, now, I'm not sure if it features this, which is a very tops thing. This is for hunting wild pigs and people actually hunt wild pigs with dogs. And uh, it'd be awesome if some of those people listen to this show. I'm not sure. But look at this reinforced blade. Uh, in cross-section, it would look a bit like, a, um, like an I-beam, kind of. But look at how at the tip you get this. It fattens up, and you get this just horrendous tip there. Horrendously sharp, pointy, and strong. And that's for thrusting into a wild pig. Uh, so you have dogs. The dogs have cornered the pig and I guess are holding them down somewhat. And uh, you walk up to it. And I'm not going to suggest it's a casual thing. I'm sure that it's terrifying and extremely dangerous. And you, and you, you rush up to the thing and you th thrust this in its heart. Uh, people do that. Uh, I think that's amazing. Uh, it's very Odysseus-like, I think. That's why someday I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, so, Wild Pig Hunter. Thanks, baby. I love this knife. Look up, uh, <laughs> since I didn't do the research, you do it for me, please. No, uh, look up Ger uh, Russian Special Forces knife, and you're going to find something that looks a lot like this. And uh, I'm not saying Tops ripped it off. I'm just saying that it's got a lot of similarities. And it's a great design, uh, not only for thrusting into pigs, but I think it would be a great outdoors knife uh, because it's so sturdy and strong. So correct, correct me if I'm wrong about that. Okay, second to lastly is this. This is the, the Tops rat. Tops, what am I talking about? This is the Ontario rat number two. Uh, that my daughter Eden gave.
gave me. Um, this was a pink knife. She wanted to buy a pink knife for me. I showed her some. Uh, this was for my birthday or Christmas. Jeez, I should remember this now. But uh, maybe it was Father's Day. Who knows? Uh, I showed her. Oh, look at this pink one. She loved it with the black handle. And uh, it's gotten a lot of use. What a great knife. The rat knives are. But the, but the two is just such a honey. Little three-inch blade and just tremendous action. Incredible action. This is the first knife I ever had where uh, the, the thumb stud flicking just stood out to me as spectacular. Uh, you've got this nylon handle. This is pink and you've got the black painted, uh, blade. So I call this pinky Tuscadero, pinky Tuscadero, Fonzie's girlfriend. I think she wore a lot of pink and black. So, um, yeah, that's what we always kind of called this one. Very, very near and dear to my heart. I've got that little, uh, um, sort of, I don't know what you call it, noose fob on there. And, uh, that's been on there the whole time. And this is a great back pocket knife. Will always be in the collection. And uh, I love that, that, that kind of thing. Uh, here, the last one I want to show, I forgot to mention in my little uh, write-up, but this is one that my dad, uh, he did a story. I, I had him on the show one time to talk about acquiring this knife. This was from um, uh, Turk, uh, uh, hmm. Sorry, I'm having a blank here. Uh, Turkmenistan, I think. Uh, um, no, that's not it. Uh, I'll, I'll think of it in two seconds. Uh, but he was on a trip. He went to a number of stands, uh, the Stan nations. And, uh, uh, oh, no, this is Azerbaijan, I think. In any case, um, he had the tour guide. There was uh, some very uh, hardy and plucky female tour guide. Um, had her kind of show him to a knife maker in this village, sat down with the guy, and while the guy was making knives, uh, he wasn't making this one in particular, uh, but while he was making knives, he and my dad played chess, and then my dad uh, bought this, and uh, by the way, to get to this place, it was down a dark alley, you know, not a dark alley, but you know, it was a strange and circuitous route to get there. And my dad was starting to think like, is this worth it? Every time Bob, I go somewhere, Bob tells me to get a knife. Is this, where, where am I going? Ends up playing chess with the guy. They, they don't speak any, they have no language in common except chess and knives. And uh, he bought this for me and uh, it's got a, like a horn. No, it's got a wood handle. Um, and the cool thing is, is when he was leaving the country, uh, the tour guide had to uh, grease a few palms and 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 do a little bit of smooth talking to get to get uh, this knife out of there. So you know, <laughs> a, a lot goes into this knife. This is uh, again a, a, another gift from someone who's given me many many knives, but just the story behind it. Um, I love the thought of my dad sitting down and and beating someone in chess. Uh, you know, again because that's what he does. Uh, and it just not being me and him walking away with a, with a great knife. So, uh, yep, th those are those are the top knives, top eleven gift knives from from designers, makers, and people who are close friends and family. And uh, they all mean a lot to me for one reason or or another. From the designers and makers, that's money out of their pocket. Uh, that's faith in me as a as a knife collector that I'm going to take good care of it and use it and, and that I'm worth, you know, I'm worthy of, of gifting one of these things because like I said, that's money right out of their pocket. And then to the friends and family who have thought of me uh, at, at gift giving times and have gotten me these really thoughtful, cool knives, sometimes things like this Leatherman that I don't think I'm ever going to use and I use all the time, or like this Helco Verk from my good friend, Mike, Hewlett, this beautiful axe. He's an axe junkie, uh, you know, and I, I, I've never, I haven't even put a, like a, an edge on this thing, but just to have this gift from an axe junkie to a knife junkie, it means a lot to me. Uh, again, I, I am the, the type of person who stores up memories inside of things. And you know, for me, it's knives, also art. Um, that's how I've learned history. 
Um, and not that I'm some great uh, knower of history, as as many may know, but uh, what I do know, I've learned through art history and through knives and weapons. And uh, these gifts mean a lot. Okay, so next week, it'll be gifts that mean a lot, gift knives that mean a lot from my fellow YouTubers and knife geeks out there. So uh, as I mentioned earlier with the Randall knife, um, before it came in, I said, oh, I have a knife coming in and you're not going to believe what it is, but it takes five years. You know, and I said, if, if anyone can guess what it is in the next week, I'll send you this. Don't take dull for an answer t-shirt, but uh, no one guessed it. And uh, came to realize maybe, maybe it wasn't a, such a good contest. Maybe that was just me asking you to read my mind. Uh, but uh, we're, we're going to set up another one. I, I got some t-shirts to give away. Not only don't take dull for an answer, but also ones with this logo on it. Uh, if you go to the knife junkie.com slash dull, you'll see all the white don't take dull for an answer merchandise. And then if you go to don't take dull, uh, if you go to uh, knife junkie.com slash dull two, you'll see all the black stuff. I like them both, but I like the black best. Jim designed it. Uh, I really like, I really like it. Uh, I should probably TM it. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for uh, checking in this episode, this midweek supplemental episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. It's my great pleasure to sit down and talk knives to you, at you, with you, um, you know, because everyone else, no one else wants to hear it. So I appreciate it. Uh, stick around for another great interview coming up, uh, as always, on Sunday. And then Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, the Knife Junkie channel. Tune in. It's always a great time. This past week, we we met a new friend, and uh, that's what we do. We bring people on, we talk to them, and they become part of the part of the party from that from that time on. So, join us for all of these things. And uh, in the meantime, between now and then, I do beg of you to please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.